Hello and welcome everyone, Lanot here. And today I've got a first look, or rather first raw, as I call them, at Oriental Empires. Big thanks to the dev team and their publisher, Iceberg Interactive, for giving me access to this beta. Um, if you do enjoy what you see and would like to see more, um, hopefully I'll be able to upload a bit more before uh, kind of the beta access ends that I currently have. Um, so do let me know if you like what you see and would like to see a little bit more um, before that comes to an end. Uh, anyway, I think it's due out later on this year. Um, this isn't necessarily a kind of a preview or even review vi um, build of the game. There's still very much a work in progress. So do bear that in mind. You may see some features and stuff that will change quite radically or some stuff that may not kind of carry on forward. But let's jump on in. Single player is currently available. I have jumped in briefly and just um, messed about a little bit. Um, but I'll be going over as kind of my initial first impressions and a brief overview of some of the features and systems. This very much has, um, you know, if you've played stuff like Civ or Endless Legends, it's a 4X um, style deep strategy game um, with various elements of other games that you might um, be familiar with. Uh, and it seems to kind of amalgamate those features pretty well. I actually, believe, I might be wrong here, but I remember reading an article a while back that... I think some of the developers that are working on Oriental, Oriental Empires are actually ex-Total um, War devs. Um, so that'll be interesting to see kind of, you know, how they you know, enter into the strategy genre themselves with this title um, and how it differs from, from Total War. Obviously it is, it is a fair bit different already and you'll see that in a moment. Um, but yeah, it, it does look pretty darn impressive so far and just for a, for a kind of a basic beta build. Um, not even kind of ready for that preview or review stage yet um, and still very much in development but yeah so far what I'm seeing is pretty impressive um, I believe when it does launch there'll be 16 factions um, we've got, currently got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 available so I don't know if there's one more to be added or maybe there's a typo on the website um, but yeah, you can see various um, of the fact various factions are actually locked, and you unlock them by playing t 20 turns to unlock those various ones. So it gives you different starting locations, and obviously each faction has their own kind of unique buffs and bonuses and attributes that um, will obviously entice you to play as them. Uh, I quite like that you for quite a few of these. I mean, maybe this will change for certain other requirements, not just 200 turns for all of them. I don't know, but um, I quite like the fact that you have to play 200 turns to unlock other factions. I mean, certainly with a lot of um, diehard Total War fans that remember the good old days of Medieval 2 where you could unlock factions after you defeated another faction in the game or played right the way through to the end of a campaign and unlock more, you'll probably be pretty pro that um, that feature you've got here. So kind of all the factions are in there and you can unlock them uh, just by playing the game, which I think is quite nice. So uh, looking through the ones we currently have available, I want to jump in um, as the... Ooh, I don't know. There's so many to choose from. I think I'll jump in as the shoe. Um, got craft development rate increased by 20%. Value of trade increased by 15%. And thought development reduced by 20 And they are farmers. Okay. So you can see all the various traits. Um, and bonuses and what have you. For each faction just on this little screen here and you get a little bit of information um, about the various faction. So they're situated in modern day area of um, Sichuan in the west of China. They have their own highly distinct culture focused on the worship of nature and the sun. While slow to adopt writing, they have great talent in craft work, producing a huge array of exquisite objects in gold, bronze, and jade. Particularly famous are the gold and bronze masks from, uh, oh god, I'm going to say that wrong, Sangzingdu and Jinsha that inspire their symbol. Their location makes them natural leaders. Historically, Shu played only a peripheral part in Chinese history and since they left no writing of their own, not much is known of them. However, the archaeological remains make it clear that they had an advanced civilization. Okay, well let's uh, jump on in. I should say this takes place, I believe they give you from um, 1500 BC to 1500 AD. So, pretty long time scale. Obviously you can set the max number of turns you want here. 
to whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it at that. Difficulty, we've got easy, normal, hard, very hard. I'm just going to start normal because this is a totally new experience to me. So let's jump on in. So greetings. Da -da -da, fertile plains. Main threats are from the north, south, east. I would advise taking your settler unit and settling a little way to the east to protect your capital against any attack from that direction. After that, I suggest you expanding into the unoccupied land to the south and west. If you can place your settlement within three hexes of rhinoceros, fish, or wild game resource, you will be able to exploit it for extra income or food. Splendid. So I've got the basics here of kind of moving around, moving units. We'll, we'll pass on that for now. We'll just kind of go on through and... Uh, explore the game together as it were in this first part again if you would like to see more then do let me know um hopefully you know we can expand our realm a little bit or we see some rhinoceros over there i assume there was meant to be a comma there and they weren't talking about rhinoceros fish <laughs> um, there's also these little markers here which um are like encounters i believe it's got hit oh that's our initial hint um so yeah these these markers here are like encounters which if you send a unit to then um you can get some some wisdom or intel or something like that. So, um, obviously we build our city from here. We can zoom all the way kind of in. And we can go out pretty seamlessly. It's quite good. I've got this on like the maximum graphic settings, which is actually a under the preset of Fantastic, which I quite like. Um, so we can just see some people down here. Graphically, it's pretty darn good. I mean, again, the graphics probably won't be the... the like the highest kind of focal point I wouldn't have thought for this game but it seems to do a pretty darn good job especially because you're going from high to low and uh, you know zoomed right out and zoomed right in and especially in the case of your units and, and battles and things like that so we can go right on into these guys and yeah the graphics are pretty good I, mean, I don't I don't know if these are final you know, there's probably some more tweaking and perhaps other options to be added in but they're not bad um, hopefully we'll have a battle um, in this episode, we'll try and try and get one going that can show you them. And um, there's not exactly kind of match combat. I don't know if that's something they're aiming for later on, but um, it seems pretty reasonable for what it's offering. Kind of think of it as a like a more deep level Civ game, kind of meets Total War rather than obviously a kind of a direct um, kind of competitor to Total War as it currently stands. But um, yeah, it seems, it seems pretty interesting so far. So this is the uh, General's Bodyguard unit, I believe. I've got my General here, his guys. And they, they look pretty good, pretty armoured up and like, nice. Um, obviously, there's no... I don't think there's any unit scales or anything like that just yet. Just talking about our unit stacks and how we can move them and add more units on the same tile. So we've got our, our Bodyguard for our General here. And our Garrison selected. I don't think we can actually move them. No, they've got to stay there. That's fine. Um, so I am going to get you guys to explore. You've got battle plans and everything else, which which is pretty cool. So you can pop them into um, different formations. You can tell them to outflank, defend. Ho as I said, hopefully we'll get a battle so that we can explore um, some of those options uh, later on. But yeah, it's my other settler, so I'll look at that hint again. Take your settler a little way to the east. Don't have capital from any attack from that direction. Okay, so they suggest taking these guys, which are my settlers, and taking them east. Uh, so we've got the coast. Oh no, there's actually more more land to discover over there. Um, yeah, I want to send them over there. So that's my moves. You can see how many turns it's going to take by the color, how many tiles they can go over. So you can see this is a suggested site of where we build our our possible settlement location. So very similar to kind of Civ in that regard of how it sort of um, uh, notifies you where there might be a reasonable site to go to. Um, if we actually click on our settlement here, we can see the various unrest um, levels for both the nobles and the peasants, so our public order. We can see the number of, um, we can see the population, population growth, labor, This one is, I think that's telling us what it's growing, what the population is growing to. Yeah, population growth details, it's not showing us any of that just yet. Uh, we've got finance here, so we can see our income from taxes. And you can, all these little tabs just break it down to show you from where, you know, all the various sources that your income is coming from. So we should be able to see 
perhaps what's upsetting everyone here. There's lots of lo local factors. I don't know if it's going to tell us specifically what those are. Insufficient authority, previous grievances. Peasant unrest. Happiness is from the governor. Well, if we take our nobles and pop them in, we should actually benefit from that. But let's get um, let's get some farming going. So we can see we've already got these lands are already farm around here. Actually, see the farmland. So um, let's convert this to farmland. That to farmland. Um, and that one there, we can do a bit more as well. Obviously, we've got eight, so we've got but we've got uh, ten population. So we want to get everyone going. Let's let's go across the river there. So there we go. So uh, all of our population is now set to various tasks of building all of those bits. We can also construct other buildings. We can uh, construct a palace. You can see the amount it's going to cost here. Um, if we hit that, we can see the amount we're going to lose there. But it should, I believe that's our income it's going to bring in, 100. Cancel that though for now. We can also get defences, a wooden palisade. Upgrade the settlement. But we need a population of at least 40 and we have insufficient funds. We've also got military buildings. A boa. Yeah, I think that, that's our income on the right, I believe. Uh, we want civic buildings here so we can actually get some more income here. Bazaar and a granary. Let's go for the bazaar first because it only takes two turns. So let's queue that up. And we can also recruit troops from this tab at the right here. So we can get nobles, noble axemen from our militia group. Got militia light spears, or we can get civilians another settler. Um, I think for now we're just going to get another settler on the go, and it says how many turns till the next one is then available. So again, kind of like Civ in that in that regard. There might be other games that this is this is similar to that I haven't played, um, but it's, it's reminding me a lot of features from Civ. Also, this um, building here, we might be able to see it later on, um, perhaps. But this is. Allowing you to construct this tab shows you buildings you can construct outside of your settlement that are kind of unique points, so like temples and things like that on specific like resource locations and other bits and pieces. Uh, the axe is for like clearing land, and the other one is for connecting towns via roads and things. I believe from my my little play session earlier, you can see our various forces on this forces tab, settlements, and obviously hints and and messages over there. So. Um, Let's uh, hit the green arrow, so we're back on this map. I'm going to bring my noble in here, so that'll help with the public order. Um, you also have this thing called battle facing, so obviously you'd want to face the right direction from where an attack's coming, and things like that, otherwise I would assume you'll take like a flanking penalty and, and all that. Uh, let's take a look at all the various bits on the right-hand side there. We've got diplomacy, first of all, we haven't encountered anyone, that's where we'll be doing that from. And here we have our various technology and culture kind of research areas and we can see that we've got a bonus to craft and a penalty to thought which was our kind of um, specific faction pros and cons um, and you could be researching something from each of these trees um, all the time down the bottom here you've got four slots uh, so one from each of these various technology and culture paths power craft thought and knowledge so we've already we can see we've already researched farms and that was a bonus thing we have because we're farmers so we can go for military drill, which increases authority and enables militia long spearman recruitment. Or we can go for horse domestication, which allows us to get more authority. I'm quite tempted to go for the wall, because I think that'd be pretty cool. We've got flood control, which reduces effects by 50% for floods. And enables well field system. And also seedling uh, transplantation. Increase farm food production by 5%. Go for that wall first for power. So it's now popped up in the bottom. The craft. What can we get here? Enables construction of the silk weaver. Jade scrape. Clear forests. So we can tweak the terrain with this. Enables mines, cool. Or we can get. Oh, we can get that wall. Is that linking into that one? Early Bronze Age stuff. Oh, we can see. Oh, so you can go through the eras. Oh, cool. So we've got to complete 27 items to unlock. I didn't go down this far before. The Imperial era, nice. 
Oh, is that showing what it's linked to or something? I don't know. Um, do we need something else for that, perhaps? Ah, yes, we do. We need that. Ah, okay, so that's connected to that one. There we go. Well, let's get the decorated ceramics going. I think. Oh, actually, no. Let's go for this. Let's go for bronze making. A thought. Um, we obviously have a penalty to how quickly we can research these. Some of these going to take a while. National myth. Shamanism. Ancestor worship. Divination. I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for yin and yang. And the knowledge, what we got over here. Okay, horse domestication. That was from power one as well, I say. So it links into that one. I see. Connects up. Composite bow allows noble archers. Calendar for more authority. So getting yin and yang, which will unlock the hot cold theory. Go for composite bow. Okay, so that's all that. So we'll just tick that. Our next tab here is available edicts, grand commandments. Uh, our enemies are many, and a ruler cannot be everywhere at once. Therefore, let us appoint a commandment to organize the army and to lead it when the ruler is otherwise engaged. Permanent effects: add general character minus one authority. Okay. Uh, I assume that'll be easier to do when you need, like, well, I assume that, like, spawns, like, another general or something to help, um... Oh, not a commandment, a commandant. Grand commandant. Sorry, not commandment. So, yeah, I assume that's, like, spawning in, like, another general. Um, so you don't personally control it, perhaps. Interesting. So, grand commandant. So now we've got a full breakdown of all the finances, so we can see everything that's coming on in. All the various bits and pieces. I can't see anywhere. Uh, oh, we've got automate treasury down here. It's like left in the middle at the moment. Uh, I was actually looking to see if there's a slider for like taxes or anything like that. Or maybe that's something we research or it's not something we do. So projected income, projected treasury. The army recruitment, our settlers that we're going for and construction. I can show you the last turn, we can see whole game stats, which is quite useful. On to the next one, we have our player status. So we've got victory conditions here. Conquest victory, son of heaven victory, points victory, and cultural victory. Influence, okay. State of advance of your state, and to the degree, and the degree. Ritual people voluntary associate with it. God, it also be boosted. Okay, so we've got that yet. And automate automation. So you can auto manage various aspects here if you just want to focus on one particular part of the game experience, as it were. It's nice to know. So you get your faction details there. What have we got over here? Statistics. Okay, so you get a breakdown of various bits and pieces. Nice. Okay, well that kind of covers all that stuff. So let's. Uh, we're, I think we're ready to end the turn now. We've moved everything. We said it's where it's going to go. Let's uh, hit the hit the gong. All right. Order execution phase. This happens when we hit end turn. So you queue all your orders up. You queue everything up that you're going to do, and then it will start playing out. Uh, you can fast forward it if you want to, so we can see our everybody moving, and then it goes through the end turn phase. Everybody else takes their turn. Recruit another settler unit. Yes, I have. Aha, I'm already ahead of you there. So if we now click on here, we can see that our unrest from the nobles is a lot less, which is good. We've actually got some suppression there, kicking in against the peasants. So that's good. No suppression showing in for the nobles, but that's fine. All of our production coming on through. And our labour as well. Doing all their things. Everybody busy. Doing a bit of everything. Okay, so we can auto construct and set things. So population farming is four and population building is four. Our current population there. We have eight. Okay. So we're just, well, everyone assuming that some of them have gone to join the settler group. Because we had ten before. Um, oh, we've got, we've got, oh, we've got two, two bodyguards. Oh, that's it. I didn't check them. So there were some in there. I just clicked on the garrison before. 
So I'm going to select those two and tell them to move out here. Oh, it said it said to go west, didn't it? Make sure you use your characters to explore the map. I shall. Um, let's let's go get the, that rhinoceros down there. So let's send them over there. We have a new heir. Oh, that's why I've gained the other unit. No, there we go. Yeah, I, I have a new heir. So this is this is my faction leader. And this is my uh, faction heir. Lovely. Okay. They were sending my faction leader out with the with the settlers, I believe. Send these guys over here and uh, cancel your move. But yes, these two, these two, going off down there. Also that over there that we well we could we could send my heir over there. Yeah, let's go send him over there. I'm sure these guys will be they'd be fine without them. We'll see. We'll see how it changes next turn. Anyway, these guys, we've now got that showing up as a potential possible settlement location. So I think that's where we'll go and settle. So we'll send them over there and we're going to hit end turn again. Okay, that's what we've got now. Our farm has been completed here. So yes, there's now people working on the farm. Take a look. So yeah, you can see the unrest has gone back up because we've moved a general way. So obviously their population are going to help the other bits while the farm is being worked on. So that's good. We've got no growth details going on at the moment. If I cancel that one, will that perhaps help? I don't know. Let's just cut it down to those two that we're building. In fact, let's just let's just change it to that one there. Oh, okay. Now we can change it again. So we can put them in there. Yeah, so we can have four one construction and four are farming. Just had to readjust that. That's fine. Not a problemo. They can't actually settle down there. That's fine. You go over there. So these guys are my faction leader and some settlers. That's fine. And my heir is going over to this spot here. You can see the amount of money we have. Should finish this this turn. I'm going to start queuing the granary in next. And hit end turn. You can see the season's changing as well. I'm going to see if there's anywhere that's telling me, like, is there anything that will tell me what year we're on? Okay, so we have the encounter here. Greetings, famous lord. As you may have heard, I have developed some new techniques. I will teach your crafts in my secrets. But I ask for you to cover the costs and to give me a little something for my old age. So we'll get de uh, decorated ceramics technology, and we have to pay 134. Yes. Boom. So we've now made progress there. So if we go back to our research... We now have this. Decorated ceramics that I was tempted to research earlier. So we can now go straight on to ceramic roof tiles if we want to. So what does that give us? That gives us a pottery workshop. Okay. Pretty cool. Right. Um, because these guys are probably really upset though. Yeah. We're going to send my uh, send my heir back to my capital. This guy's going to move on down. We want to get near that rhinoceros. Right, these guys are now over here, and uh, we are going to create a new settlement. Jincha. Yeah, and sorry for probably butchering all the names in this. Uh, it's just <laughs> hopefully, in between the time um, of kind of this uh, this beta build and when the game actually comes out, I can actually learn some better pronunciation. I'm sure you guys are already telling me how awful I am in the comment section, so um, cheers, guys. <laughs> okay, we want to get some farms going. There we go. Whack them down. Put those to farmland. Ah, see here, because we've got the mountains, we can build a pavilion up in the mountains. A pleasant place in the hills 
to visit will calm the minds of the lords and ladies who visit. Why worry about politics when living is good? Increase cultural victory point, increase noble happiness by 10%. So yeah, that'll help reduce how unhappy they are, um, which is good. So reduce their unrest. So we could actually build that if we wanted to. I, I'm going to go for it. That's going to take... That's taking... Saying it's going to take 16 turns. Eh. Or is that how many are working on that? I don't know what the numbers mean. I think that's... Is that turns? I want to say turns. Acquired. Yeah, because that's now only going to take one turn. That's going to take three. So it's going to take 16 turns over there. Okay. And if you guys spot anything or have, have played this yourself or watched some other people's videos and are noticing some things that I am totally uh, missing out on, then do let me know. Well, so far I'm enjoying it. It's, it's a very... um. I mean, so far the pace seems pretty nice and chilled and relaxed. Uh, but I'm sure it will pick up. And I, I was uh, testing out another faction the other day. It's their starting position for the first like hour or something like that. And um, yeah, it was good. that was good fun. Okay. Got the bazaar built here. And a farm. Oh, a new power encountered. Bandits. But they'll be on diplomacy, won't they? Oh, no. Not like a proper faction as such. Where have we located them? Aha. Uh -huh. Bandits. I just like spin. Well, let's... Shall we... Let's go give... Bring my son back here first, but let's get some um, troops recruited so we can go take them out. I mean, so we could go get the Noble Axeman. The Light Spearman. Apparently we're getting a free unit of one of these guys. Uh, I think that's our total turn number up there. Must be our turn. So we've had so far, we've had five turns. So yeah, let's get some let's get some noble axemen in here. Next will be available in twelve turns. Can we also get you guys? It doesn't seem like these are costing us anything at the moment, which is pretty cool. Ah, but as we ah as we recruit more, we can see the the unrest is already going down. Uh -huh. Let's see. Cool. All right. So yeah, bring you back in here. Um, select you guys. Good site for a city, they say, is down here. So let's send them down there. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you guys down there as well. We'll be able to get the rhinoceros in as well. Let's zoom on in here. Actually, yeah, if we go to those bandits, we should be able to zoom in on them. Yeah, we can see their force on this tile. Yeah, spearmen. Ready for battle. You can have pretty big battles. I've seen a uh, couple of other YouTubers that are covering this as well. And get some pretty big uh, sieges going on as well. Obviously, when you build walls and stuff. It's pretty cool. You get, like, siege equipment as well. What's that, what's that over there? I don't know what that is. It's like a shield marker. That's a, another encounter over there as well. So actually, yeah, let's, send, let's send this guy over there to the encounter. Faction leader. If he goes into the woods. Okay, so we're finishing off that farm there. I think we're recruiting those new units. It's uh, their upkeep. It's gone down. Well, the income, the upkeep's increased, obviously. So uh, if we go to ah, uh, not edicts. Da, 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 da. This one. You see our income, expenses. Yeah, army upkeep. Yeah, army upkeep was zero before, and now it's 50. So is that perhaps the bazaar and granary? Is that the upkeep there they, they were bringing in, rather than the actual what they were producing? So I thought those were producing that much. Maybe that's their upkeep. Yes, yeah, so that's their upkeep. I guess it'll say, like, that amount is what they'll bring to it. Use ceramics for trade. Okay. Pottery workshop. Oh, yeah, because we researched that. Yep. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Upgrade. All that. I think I'm getting it as I go. 
I think, I mean, I guess maybe there'll be a tutorial when the game's finished. Oh yeah, you're going over there for that encounter. You guys are going to actually settle another settlement. There we go. Uh, Chengdu. Uh, if we go on here. Okay, so we can't get that. I don't want to build a farm that because that will clear the rhinoceros, but I assume they're... Ah, oh, wow, okay, look. Nice. So I'm thinking... Oh, no. Now plus 205. Income, resources... Oh, it should be on resources. Royal estate, perhaps? Mm -mm. I thought that would come up sharp in the resources tab. Oh, yeah, look, resources. Yeah, rhinoceros. And rhinoceros. Boom. Oh, oh, yeah, we've got that one over there as well. Nice. This is a really good one. Okay, so get farm and going there in those two locations. Can't get that yet. Is that maybe a research I need to go for? Connected roads or something. Can't see anything for any of that. Just yet. Oh, there we go. Road building. Yes, yeah, so once we finish that wall. Alright. Oh, so he's literally like, oh, his, his army's like devastating the forest as he goes through. Ah, cool. Is that rhinoceros really quite a massive uh, boost there? Yeah, so 14 turns to the pavilion is done, I believe. Right, um, let's gather our forces from here. And, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna upset them leaving here, isn't it? But I want to battle, so. Off we go. See how bad it is. Our, uh, unrest in a moment. I quite like this though, as a, like a just getting stuck in and learning as I play sort of thing. Obviously, I'm as I said, I hope, hopefully a tutorial is about um, when the game comes out or something like that. Ask for 410 gold to increase authority. A bandit. Oh, the treasure. Oh, no. They'll, oh, they'll offer. Sorry. Reduce personal authority by one. Yeah, I'm going to have that. Yeah, go for it. I'll take that money. Authority is minus one. Okay. Probably not a good thing to do, like, lower my authority that much, but oh well. Let's pop him over here. How are you guys? Oh, wow, yeah, you're, you guys are upset. You guys are upset. Benefits of learning a game as you play, and some that are not necessarily benefits because it might have rebellions everywhere. Did we, did we carve through that forest? Oh, no, we just, like, knocked knock the forest down. It's come back up. Maybe it was a like, graphical glitch, actually. It is early, early times. High noble unrest. Ah, yes. Ooh, dear, oh, dear. That's not good. So we can actually chop, we can clear land, I assume, for more farms. Civic buildings, that doesn't cost any upkeep, just a lot to actually start off. Currently going for the granary. Just leave that for now. They're busy over there. As are you guys. What else we got? Oh, we've got to progress. Clear forests. Okay, what are we going to do here? Bronze making. Bronze armor. Casting. Reduces siege damage from fire. 
earthquake damage reduction. Nice. Um, that's the ceramic roof tiles. I think we'll go for... Yeah, we'll go for that. Jade working. Alright, alright, alright. Let's just see if we can have this battle. And uh, then I think we'll have you know, gone through the basics. Started it off. Gone through a few seasons as well. And we're going to attack these bandits. So actually, I'm going to give um, my various units some... Uh, some battle plans. So this unit that I've got in the middle, my militia light spears. We get them to go for a charge. Uh, then you guys are currently set to attack. I'm going to go for outflank with you, with you two units. I hope that you'll go and flank on around my opponent because you don't control uh, the units in real time. You set them orders before you go into battle, then you end turn and you see how it resolves basically. Um, it's quite cool. Quite like that. Got that over there. We're still building our temple. Twelve more turns till that's done. It's, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. Um, these guys are super unhappy. Probably because I'm building too many uh, settlements and not placing enough of my uh, my generals in place to look after them. But it works for purpose of an overview video here. So let's end the turn. Here we go. So we can we can control the camera and move it around all the while the end turn is going on. We can see our forces marching to meet the bandits that are across the river there. We can't obviously control them or select them or anything. We can just see how it's going to unfold. They're crossing the river right now. And again, these guys are going in for the charge. Our spear's in the centre. And our general and axes should be going for the flank. So they clash together. They should be going for flanking manoeuvres. Yeah, sticking around the back. Again, perhaps they are still in need of some work. Or perhaps they need to be, I don't know, placing adjacent squares to go, or he hexes rather, to move on around. Seems like my guys are doing alright. <laughs> Actually lying down on the ground. Need some blood in there. Let's get my axes or my, my general in there. Because they're much better troops. We can hit the fast forward button. Oh. The bandits ran away. So I guess we forced them to retreat. And we are victorious. Yep, yeah, they're, they're running off over there. So we managed to break them. Other factions take their turn, so battle report. We can see that... I guess our, our losses there. 17, they lost 20. And how many do we have remaining? 99, they have 46. Okay, a narrow victory. So we're going to move back over here. I'm just going to get them all to charge now and change... ...all of these. And I'm actually going to put my... Uh, yeah, ...put my noble axes in the centre. We're going to go after them now. Leave everyone else doing their thing. We've got our treasury coming back up again, which is nice. Technology warning. Oh, okay. We can do some tech. Oh, that's nice. It warns us. Go for building roads. Road building. And we've got knowledge to research as well. We've got composite bows. Okay, that's nice. Horse domestication. Yes, we need some more authority. Um, I just wonder, actually, if can we... Can we recruit those back here? I know our nobles are super pissed. Probably need to build the the right bow. Well, probably need to build the bow, Lionheart. That would help. Yep, noble archers. Pop that in there. What have we got over here? Siege granary. Pottery workshop. I really need to placate these people. They are very, very upset. Probably need to leave some behind. So what I might even do is actually take my heir and send him back. Oh, so we've got another battle. They've moved into the same tile that we were going towards. So it's round two here. 
My heir is not with them though, he's going off uh, back to our settlement, our capital. But I've got two units, noble axes. We should be okay, although well, they're hanging back again. It's just the, the spears on spears. In they go. Guys just chilling back there. Fast forward. And they've broken again. Again, battle report, clear victory. We only lost eight, they lost fourteen. We keep chasing those those bandits away. Oh, and hello, who are you? Have you appeared in our diplomacy? Ah, the bar. So request audience. And we have various bits and pieces that we can offer here. Recognize Emperor, declarations. Payments, fraternal harmony. So yeah, non-aggression packs. Recognize emperor. Ah. You can only recognize one emperor. You'll lose little authority from relinquishing your own claim. Okay, so it's kind of like a nice nod of the head to them. Reveal capital location. Um, can we do that? Share it so it's even. Very well, we accept. Lovely. All our information about our relationship with them there. And we can see that their capital is over here. Lovely. Right, guys. Well, that's where I'm going to wrap up this uh, first look, this first raw at Oriental Empires. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you would like to see more, then let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, also, if you've got any tips uh, that you guys have observed that you think I've missed out on, do let me know as well. And uh, yeah, if I don't um, get a chance to record any more of this before kind of the beta um, access ends, then um, I'll certainly be looking to cover this uh, when it comes out or when there's more preview opportunities in the future. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, take pride on the Legion. Check out my affiliates and sponsors, XMG, Green Man Gaming, and Overclockers UK. Until next time. Ciao for now.